um, we'll be going over the grade book in, um, in Blackboard Ultra Course View. Um, behind me, I do have my assistant, John Patrick, so enjoy that. Um, he'll be working on his, on his homework right now. If you have any questions, totally please feel free to put them in the chat. I will do my best to address them as quickly as possible. I will be moving at a little bit of a faster pace, but this is being recorded so you can review it later and you can always feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions at ctl at laverne.edu. Um, uh, Jeremy, uh, the director of the CTL, will be also monitoring chat, so he is here as well. And so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right. So there are actually a couple of ways to access your gradebook in Blackboard Ultra. Okay, so one of the main, one of the faster ways is to access it from the front left-hand panel right here once you first log in. So you can go into the course, into the individual courses, or you can just click on grades over here on the left-hand column. And this will show you a list of all of your current courses and past courses. So this can be a very extensive list. Um, all you need to do is click on the class title, and it will take you directly to the gradebook. Okay. Some other things that I want to show you. It will also show you the different assignments that are currently going on. Um, if you have already done grades and there are things to post, so um, in some previous workshops, I've talked about you can do grading and then your students won't see the grades until you actually post the grades. And we'll go over that a little bit and um, we'll go over that in a little bit. But you can see a summary, you can post grades from here. Um, and so it's, it's a nice tool to kind of give you an overview of what's happening in your course before you even go into the course itself. Okay, when you do click on that um, link, from the main menu. This will actually take you into your course itself. If you want to get to the home page, you just need to click in um, on the course content icon in the upper right hand corner, and this will take you to the home page of the course. So this is what it looks like when you first enter. Okay. So main navigation wise, you can go through there. Or again, another way you can get to your course gradebook is actually going clicking on courses on the main menu on the left hand side, entering the course itself, and then clicking on this sheet that has a pencil in the lower right hand corner. That icon is located in the upper right hand corner. <laughs> okay. If you hover over it, your mouse will, um, a little pop up that will, will, po will show up that will say grade book. Okay. Now, this is because I've been creating things over the last few days with, with you all. This is what my grade book looks like. There are two main views to a grade book. You can have the list version or you can have the grid version. The grid version looks a little bit more like the original course view where you see a list of all of your students. Anita, you're in my class. Mm -hmm. um, as well as a, um, a running list of all of the different um, uh, assignments that you have created. Okay, now it's asking me to set up the overall grade. So you, you're doing great, Anita. This is going to be essentially your um, weighted total, and it will walk you through all of these different steps. So you just click Setup, and it will show you, it'll tell you what you need to do as far as setting up a weighted total. Okay. Um, you have the ability to do based off of specific items. So if you have a final exam and that is worth 20% of the grade, you can go off of items or you can go off of categories. So the categories are the same as the ones from the original view. So that would be discussions, journals, uh, tests, assignments, and um, you can also create your own categories um, as well. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit cancel. Now, talking about creating 
different things. It does it it looks different than the original uh, Blackboard. Two. Download a copy of your gradebook. All you need to do is click on this box in the upper left hand corner that has the arrow going into it. We'll just click on that and you can download the full gradebook selected columns and you can choose either an Excel file. You can also choose to download it to your content collection, which is essentially the Blackboard version of the cloud or you can download it to your specific device. Now it says device because Ultra is built off of a um, multi-device platform, meaning you can download it to your iPad, you can download it to your phone, you can download it to uh, your computer itself. Okay. Um, now, talking about downloading, you also have the ability to upload. So if you keep all of your grades in an Excel file, you do have the ability to also upload that to your gradebook. Okay. Um, I I'm going to recommend that for 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 the sanity of your students <laughs> and for the sanity of yourself uh, towards the end that you on a regular basis, if you're going to keep a spreadsheet copy of um, your entire grade center, that you update your grade book at least once a week to let them to let your students know what's going on and to save you time when before you uh, have to submit your grades. If you need additional help or you're a little bit confused on the different formatting or anything like that, you can just click on the help button and this will take you to the Blackboard help. Okay. Um, this is really a fantastic resource. Um, I know that sometimes it gets a bad rap, but when it comes to um, building in any of the Blackboard versions, it really does kind of give some of those steps that you're like, oh, I didn't realize that. Okay? So just know that if you have questions, we go there first. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm going to take a breath. Can you add audio, video feedback to each entry in the gradebook? That is a good question. So what's going to happen is, so say I've got my assignment, and Anita, I'm going to grade, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to grade yours because you haven't done a submission. So I'm going to grade this uh, reflection assignment, and so I'm going to just click on it, and I can enter the grade manually, or I can go to view, and this will show me that there was an attempt. It was submitted on the 20th at 10.57 a.m. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I see the post that I've originally done, and I also see the uh, submission. So as you can see, I've already done um, I've already done a little bit of notation here. I also have the ability to add comments when I am grading, um, and then I can go ahead and just type in the grade of the attempt, add any feedback, and this is where you'll have the ability to add the audio slash video feedback that you were uh, asking about. Um, how that shows up to your students when they're looking at it. So let's go ahead and add some feedback here. Again, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. I see that um, I've entered the grade, but I have not posted the grade. So I need to go back to the grade book. And I see that I've entered it. I can click here on the assignment itself and post all of the grades, or I can click on the individual grade and post just that individual grade. So it can be helpful if you are going through the grading process, if you want to post as soon as you're done. I'm going to recommend that you don't post until you don't post the grades until all of the all of the students have their um, grades entered. Um, I learned this the hard way where <laughs> I was <laughs> posting as I was grading and then I needed to deal with some stuff. And so it took me another day or so to get back to the grading. 
and some of my students had grades and some of my students didn't and I was getting emails and all this different stuff. So just be consistent, post once everything's done, okay? So I have posted, that means my student will be able to see it and this is my preview student. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter preview mode so we can see what that feed feedback looks like for the student. Okay, so I'm in as my student. I know that I'm in preview mode because this bar color has changed. Also, um, I see the little dude up here in the upper right hand corner. As a student, I have the ability to go to the grade book. I see that these are the grades that have been entered. I'm still waiting on a few to be graded, but I also have the access to this feedback here. So I just need to, it tells me the breakdown of everything that has been done. I'll go to view assessment. And did I not save it? There it is, right there. So there's the feedback. And so that's where it will show up for your student. Okay. Um, Teresa, is that feedback with annotation saved as a PDF the same way it was in uh, the, v the previous Blackboard? I do believe it is. The video would connect directly to your computer, yes. But the video itself is saved to Blackboard. Okay. All right. So that is what it looks like from the student view. And here we go. I've been talking so fast for so many days that I'm talking way faster than I anticipated. <laughs> Okay, so I am in the list of you for my grade book. Again, I have the ability to post grades um, just by simply posting all of those right there from uh, the list of you. I like that it tells me uh, that all of the things are graded, nothing's graded. Um, I've got one to post. And then once I've posted everything, it shows me that my job, as far as grading goes, has been complete. It also gives me a rundown of how many assignments were, are missing and how many were submitted. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's going to give you, in list view, it's going to give you a nice clean summary of all of the assignments that you have in your course. Something that I want to give you the heads up on, though. I'm going to go into a, uh, one of my live courses. I'm going to go into the gradebook and it'll automatically open in list view. So it can get pretty long. Okay? So I want you to keep that in mind. All right. We're back here. Now, as many of you know, and if you don't know, I'm letting you know now, gradebook does not, um, Ultra does not have blogs or wikis as a tool, okay? It does have journals, something that we just recently found out <laughs> is that journals is technically still in beta. Uh, after some very interesting discussions with the development team, we were able to move up the official launch date for journals to November 1st. Now, why I'm telling you this and why I'm speaking much slowly, much more slowly about this is because while it was in beta, journals were not connected to the gradebook. When you created a journal and you said that you wanted it to be create, uh, graded, it would automatically create a column, but you would not have the ability to view the attempt, just how we viewed the attempt for um, the assignment within the gradebook. You would need to open up one window with the journals and then one window with the gradebook. Personally, and I know I'm being recorded, it pissed me off. So, no, do not delete it. Um, because it is going to be fixed, just 
Keep in mind that journals is going to be a little bit of a different grading process for until November 1st. Okay? Both Bev and Teresa, I see ya. And that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. I'm letting you know journals is going to be a little bit of a different process for grading than other things. It will be a different way to review your student entry. Okay. So, and just keep in mind that when you've got the feedback, when you have feedback for us, we take it automatically to directly to Blackboard. All right, so let's go back to the gradebook and let's go ahead and go to the gradebook settings. That's that cog in the upper left hand corner. All right, so we've got our friendly right hand pop out coming here. And the first thing that we see is grade schemas. Now you do have the ability to edit the grade schema. It has one already set up for you, but if you would like to edit it, you can. Here's something that I would like you to notice, and this is something that we have also talked with uh, Blackboard about. So if you have a 97, you could have an A plus or an A. To remedy that, what you need to do is hit a plus sign, the plus sign, and add a different column. Okay? You need to type in 96 because that's the next lowest number and then add another column and make that your lowest number that you want for your A. So let's do a 93 to a 96 is an A. Okay? So what that does is that gives me, I'll delete this top one that I just created that's 96 to 97, and then that, cre that changes my grade schema from 90, 97 to 100 being A+, plus, 93 to 96 being an A. Okay, and then I can go ahead and delete this. So, that, that is another thing that we have been dealing with, um, but I want to give you this heads up right here, right now. Okay, I don't want you to be surprised by it, or um, if, especially if you have a different grade schema for your department or for your school, please keep this in mind. There will need to be editing done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So that is the grade schema right there. Now, automatic zeros. Assign automatic zeros for past due work. There are pros and cons to this right here. So um, I have a pretty lenient late work uh, policy because one, I can <laughs> uh, for my classes because they don't fall under official university classes. And two, because my classes are designed to get experience, um, not necessarily grades. And that's something that I communicate with my students very clearly. Um, so when I would have students, uh, when I kept this assigned zeros automatically to past due work, it freaked people out. They were like, I'm failing the class, all of this different stuff. Ah. But what it also does is it shows your students an indication that there is a zero that has automatically been done. Um, it saves you time. You don't have to enter that zero into the grade book. Um, but you just need to be aware that uh, your students will be asking you about what's going on if you have a late policy. Um, if you do assign zeros after any late period, then you're good, you're good to go, okay? Um, I personally liked keeping that box checked <laughs> because it, it kept my students on their toes. Um, and it saved me time. But it is completely dependent upon your grading policies, your late policies, 
and you need to have that conversation with your student. Very much so like we recommend having a uh, syllabus discussion or a syllabus negotiation at the beginning of your class. This would be part of that discussion um, that I've set this up so that it will be an automatic zero if your work is late. Um, I can change it after the fact, but just keep in mind that that's where you currently stand. Okay, communicate with your students, let them know about this thing, um, and don't don't put them deer in the headlights because that would just suck. Okay, now let's get to grade categories. So you do have the ability to edit these grade categories. Um, all you need to do to add a new category is literally click on the button that says add new category and type it in. Okay. Now these are the same categories that show up when you are setting up your overall grade. Um, so you would be, you would have the ability to go by category and you can just add the different categories based off of that. Okay. Okie doke are talking. Here we go. Now, let's go back to the cog. So we are at grade categories. Um, now we're going to go to course rubrics. So this is a cool tool that was actually very similar to the one that is in the original course view. Yeah, rubrics. Um, you have the ability to create a rubric for your class. Um, so if you have consistent discussions, create run one rubric right here by clicking on new rubric. And you can fill it out. You can add more columns. You can uh, add more rows. You can change the title. It will automatically create, um, it'll automatically calculate the overall percentage. And keep in mind that um, rubric math is different than grade math, okay? So when we say 100%, 88%, 75%, all of that, that is of this 25%. And this is only 25% of the overall grade, okay? so. Communicate that to your students. Remember that when you're building things. These are important things to keep in mind. Okay? All right, so I'm going to discard that. Now, um, so that is rubrics. Grade notation. So you can override a student's overall grade with notations that fall outside of the grade, uh, the course grade schema. I'm going to recommend just to kind of stay away from this um, because it opens you up for a lot of, as my friends appreciate, funkification in your grade book. Okay? Um, this would be something that you could talk about with your department chair or something like that. But overall, if you need to create some type of special grading for um, a specific student or something like that, that should be done in in a different way. Okay. Okay. Um, so that is gradebook settings. Now, if you very similar to um, the original gradebook um, in the original course view, if you create an assignment, a uh, column will be created in your gradebook. If you create a test, column will be created in your gradebook. If you choose to grade a discussion forum, column will be created in your gradebook. Or in this in this the list view, a row will be created in your gradebook. Okay? If you have an assignment that is being turned in or is existing outside of the Blackboard verse, all you need to do is hover between the two items and click plus sign and you can add an item. So this would be adding a column. Okay? So very similar to adding a column uh, in the old grade book, but instead of doing like three different steps on six different submenus, all you need to do is click that plus sign and you can add that item. Okay? We have six minutes left in our session. 
I'm going to go ahead and take a breath. What questions do we have? Um, um, does it archive so it can be used in all courses? Yes, the, um, the rubric can be used across multiple courses. You can bring it over through the content cloud or, um, let me see, I don't know. I think it needs to be I think it needs to come over through the content through the content cloud. Comes over with the course content when you do a copy, a content copy. So real quick, bonus points. If you want to copy content from one of from one of course to another, go into the course that you are copying into, click on these three dots in the upper right hand corner right across from course content, and you can copy content from there. And this will give you a list of all of the different courses that you can copy from. And you select the course, select content, and you can copy the selected content. Okay. Um, I created an activity for 10 points, but my rubric is in percentage. Um, would it already calculate the grade for the students on the activity in points? Yes. So if you are doing, and, and actually when you are creating, um, when you're creating a rubric, it will only do percentages or percentage range. The, the percentage range, Again, I know I'm being re I'm being recorded. The percentage range is stupid. I don't like it. But you can do the basic percentage, and that will calculate it for your students. And keep in mind that rubrics are really helpful when providing your students with structure. I wouldn't necessarily do them for um, like final exams or something like that. That I would do more hands-on grading. Um, but definitely for like a midterm or something like that where you are giving your students an opportunity to not only um, build the skills but also do some self-assessment before, that's when I would do rubrics. And Jeremy, you can always step in and be like, no, Elizabeth, you're completely wrong because you're the assessment scholar. But yes. I think you're doing well even though I really don't like rubrics. Yes, he really doesn't. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Can you, can we send reminders to students to submit homework, um, to submit homework? So what actually happens, um, Julie, is that it will automatically be sent to them because when you set a due date in your course, it will populate the column, uh, it'll populate the calculator. Nope, just kidding, it's a different C word. The calendar and so those due dates will be popping out to them. I do recommend that you send messages to them which you can also which can be so you can go to messages and you can create a new message and then when you create a new message you can send an email copy to their to your students. So that would be very helpful for your students but it will also if you accidentally miss a day or something like that um, It'll also populate in their cal calendars. Um, my question is in regards to Blackboard Ultra Test class that we just took. Um, you can email me about that. I used to send them reminders from the grade book. Um, that that is not. Um, that's not a thing anymore. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Maybe maybe it's something that I missed. I'm always down to learn new things. Yeah. 
I don't think that functionality is there. All right. Yeah. Well, actually, if you have any further questions, you can email us at ctl at laverne.edu. We have actually come to the end of our session. Um, so I want to thank you so much for participating this week and today and this afternoon. It has been a delight. And happy Friday. Um, please remember to join the um, university state State of the University address that's happening in about a half hour. If you have any further questions, you can contact us at ctl at laverne.edu. Have a wonderful day.